Alright guys, so I was going to do Day of the Dead, since I just did Dawn and Night, but uh, then I ended up hopping on a stream with Stevie and Nanette, and um, we were talking about Goosebumps, and I made a post the other day on the community tab about maybe possibly doing the series. So I'm going to go for it here. Now on Netflix they used to have all the all four or five seasons and then the special episodes the two parters so now they only have the special ones the two parters so i'm going to do the haunted mask which i think to this day is still my favorite of the goosebump stories aside from night of the living dummy and like two the night of the living dummy two three bride it's all a ripoff of Chucky and Child's Play. We know that. And R.L. Stein basically rips off Stephen King all the time, let's be honest. But besides seeing Halloween at five, six years old on Halloween night, and then the Friday the 13th series that got me into horror, hardcore, Goosebumps were the, the book version of me getting into horror. I owned all the original, I want to say like 64 books or something like that had all of them, read all of them, and then the TV series came out when I was, I don't know, maybe nine, eight, nine, and I would come home from school and Goosebumps would be on, and just absolutely adored the series and the books. So, what the hell? Let's talk Goosebumps, The Haunted Mask, coming right now. Also, um, if you guys are not subscribed to Nanette, channel or Stevie's channel I'll put a link in the description definitely please check them out if you like my content or people in our community's content absolutely amazing people with amazing channels so I'll put a link for Stevie's channel and a link for Nanette's channel and definitely if you're not su subscribed please go check the content out like subscribe share do all that great stuff now can we all agree that the theme song to the Goosebumps show is just fucking amazing because it is so every time I hear it I get Goosebumps pretty much just from the nostalgia of seeing this show all the time when I was young hello I'm R.L. Stein. I write the Goosebumps books viewers beware you're in for a scare Goosebumps. Bum, 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 bum. So we have the main character here, Carly Beth, and her best friend, who I don't know her damn name, but she sees this novelty shop that just opened up, and she's getting picked on by these two boys in her in school picking on her all the time, playing pranks on her, and then she wants to scare the living shit out of them and get back at them. And she's going to end up getting this mask that is not going to go the way that she wishes that it would go. It goes very, very wrong. And I love the character of Carly Beth. I think she's one of the standout characters in the Goosebumps TV show out of all the episodes. And like I said, I think this is my favorite to this day episode of Goosebumps and this is a two-parter so we're gonna cover them together like it's just one long episode who the hell is that dedicated to pranking a girl that these pe these two kids Chuck and Steve they have pumpkins on their head like masks and they're hiding under the, like the grass and the dirt and just waiting for her to come how did they even know that she was gonna come that way and they're just waiting there for how long? Like, come on, like, that's a little ridiculous. And last summer they put a dead octopus on her. Like, where do you even get, like, an, a, a dead octopus to put on a girl? Like, these kids are assholes. Like, complete motherfuck. The uh, owner of the novelty shop, the mask guy, he actually does look pretty creepy. He's a creepy looking dude, and then he has like the, the scars and stuff on the one side of his face. He looks like a very creepy man. Then we see the little art project that the Carly Beth's mom made in art class, and it's a plaster of Paris head of Carly Beth. And we know that this is going to come into play at the end of this uh, episode and free her from this mask's grip. 
and the the plaster of Paris uh, face of her of Carly Beth, it's creepy. Like it smiles at her, and uh, then later on when it says, "Help me, please help me," that's some creepy shit. Like it really is effective. How old is Carly Beth? What maybe like fourteen, thirteen, something like that? Her mom makes her a fucking duck costume for Halloween. Really? <laughs> like a duck costume? Come on! Like she, she's thirteen, fourteen, you know, preteens, whatever. No preteen girl wants to be a fucking duck for Halloween, man. Like, come on. Like, her mom doesn't know this. Her mom thinks that she's going to love this, this this Halloween costume. I, I guess she does. And the costume looks ridiculous. The duck. <laughs> the brother dresses up in the costume and scares Carly Beth and calls her a scaredy cat. The duck costume looks ridiculous. Ridiculous. Then these goddamn kids, Chuck and Steve, they pretend that they're sorry for picking on her all the time, and they give her a sandwich or something, and it has worms in it. What assholes, man. <laughs> like, they give this poor girl, they make her eat worms in a sandwich. Like, come on, man. Like, they should be arrested. <laughs> These people should be sent to juvie, like, immediately, because they're going to grow up to be serial killers, rapists, or molesters, something, because these kids are not right in the head. And after that, she bites the worm sandwich, the whole people there in the lunch tables, all laughing at her. They're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. And then Carly Beth rips apart the duck outfit. She doesn't want anything to do with this duck costume. She wants to be something scary to scare the hell out of Steve and Chuck. This bitch just stole $30 from her mom. <laughs> like, there's the money, $30 that she takes is, like, in, like, something in, like, the kitchen or dining room. Like, it's just chilling there. Like, I get it. It's, it's got to be the mom's money. She just steals it. Like, she's not too nice. But all the masks that's in the whole front room here doesn't do it for her. It's not scary enough. So she ends up going into the back room with the creepy old man. And he proceeds to absolutely re resist her begging for one of these masks. And the mask in this, in this episode, it really is scary. Like, it, it's in a very effective, scary mask. Like, it really looks cool. Like, I would love to have one of those masks, like, identical to that. Looks so awesome. And then, like, when it she puts it on and it can't come off and it's, like, grown onto her skin and there's no bottom to the mask and stuff, that's scary, man. Like, I remember seeing this when I was young and... I remember, like, putting on a Halloween mask, like, after seeing this, like, for Halloween and kind of worried that the same shit would happen to me, <laughs> that the mask wouldn't come off. So, I mean, it is an effective story here. And then when she goes to touch the mask, how it, it, it moves and opens his eyes and all the other masks turn and look at her, creepy. And then he said, I said, no, I said, no. Carly Beth, no means no. He makes a good deal, the old man. He will give her a scary gorilla mask made from real gorilla hair for nothing. That's one hell of a deal, Carly Beth. He should have been a monkey or a gorilla, whatever. Okay, yeah, the whole thing with him putting his hand on her shoulder and touching her and stuff. I'm just not okay with that. So Carly Beth turns down that deal for the, the amazing, scary gorilla mask with, made from real gorilla hair, and she ends up just grabbing the mask, throwing $30 at him, and running out. And she feels bad for a second. She says, like, what am I doing? But then she just shakes it off. <laughs> and she's just like, this is going to just scare the hell out of Chuck and Steve. That's her mission for Halloween. Get rid of Chuck and Steve murder them put them in a quarry somewhere where no one will find the body and it's a cool shot when she puts the mask on for the first time and you're seeing the pov through the eyes of the mask into the mirror that's a cool shot like for a goosebumps show like for a, like young adult show 
That's a cool shot. Sabrina, that's her uh, best friend's name. And I really like how her voice changes when she's wearing the mask. Like the brother even asks after she scares him and she says the mask won't come off. And then she takes it off and throws it at him. She s says to her, he says that like, how did you do that voice? Like that was the scariest part. And she just shakes it off. So she's like, I don't know. <laughs> like she should know that something's wrong here. And then she goes out trick-or-treating to find Chuck and Steve with her plaster of Paris head on a stick with a red handkerchief to look like blood, I guess. Like the head was decapitated. It's a cool idea. So Sabrina, that's her name, right? I already forgot. Sabrina, I'm pretty sure. She is freaking out about the mask Carly Beth's wearing, says it's too weird for words. And then you have Carly Beth freaking out, shaking her, saying, shut up, shut up, shut up. To be continued in a second. Back here after a second in part two of the haunted mask, Goosebumps. So Carly Beth runs off and runs away from Sabrina, and Sabrina's just completely shook up from this. And Chuck and Steve are pirates for Halloween, and they're in this cemetery, Eda Grove Cemetery. And they're about to get the scare of a lifetime. And yeah, again, all the POV shots through the mask's eyes look really cool. Like, good camera work. I actually really enjoy that. So then Carly Beth, with the mask and her plaster Paris head, comes up and scares Steve and Chuck. And then they just say, she says, say you're sorry to Carly Beth. And they start saying that they're sorry and apologizing and say that they only prank her and stuff because they like her. Which we all have experienced that like someone you like you end up you know treating them like shit or bullying them a little bit because you like them like you see that shit all the time when you're in elementary school middle school even a little bit in high school so it's relatable then this, i love this scene it's really creepy with the, her plaster of paris head and it just talks and says help me please help me so cool. I love that scene. Then she buries her plaster of Paris head in the graveyard here because she wants to be done with Carly Beth. She wants to be this new person, this haunted mask person. Haunted Carly Beth. Mask girl. Coming to a theater near you on Friday the 13th, which is next Friday. This Friday, yes. The effects with the mask when she goes back with Sabrina to Sabrina's house and she's trying to take the mask off, it actually looks really good. Like, it looks like it's her face. Like, it looks like the mask is stuck to her face. And uh, then the whole thing with Sabrina looking to try to help her get the mask off, and she says there's no bottom to this mask, and, it, like, the mask just goes down, like, through her body, like... That's creepy, man. And I said, like earlier, that I was worried about that happening to me after seeing this. The, that next Halloween, when I put a mask on, I was worried about the same shit happening to me. And that's just a scary line, just saying that there's no bottom to this mask. And that this is her face now. And then Carly Beth starts freaking out and saying about her eyes and that she's looking in the mirror and she says this, Where, what's wrong with my eyes those are not my eyes so the mask is completely transforming her into whatever the hell this mask is evil dead rise better be fucking good because evil dead is one of the only few perfect franchises for me the first Evil Dead is amazing. The second one's my favorite in the series. Army of Darkness is so underrated, and it's amazing. The remake from 2013 is one of the best remakes from the 2000s onward. Absolutely amazing remake. Ash vs. Evil Dead, I love the entire show. So there has not been a bad entry in this series. I really hope Evil Dead Rise is at least decent. If not, it'll ruin this perfect streak that Evil Dead has had. But this has nothing to do with Goosebumps. So she goes back to the novelty store and talks to the old man, and we get some exposition here and explanation about the masks. He made these masks, and they were beautiful looking, but no matter how many masks he made, they kept just 
turning into these monstrosities. And now he says to her, and it's another creepy line saying that this is your face now. Like, this is you. Like, this is your face. And have her look in the mirror. Creepy, man. Like, imagine going through that as a, like a young adult, like a preteen, being shown in the mirror that that's your face forever now. This hideous, disgusting face. That's scary shit. But of course, conveniently, there's one possibility that might save her. <laughs> and he knows what it is. And he says, you need a symbol of love. So she doesn't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> but she'll figure it out very soon. And then we have all the masks that just start floating after her and stuff. It looks pretty cool. I mean, she has shitty c CGI effects and stuff. But it, it's effective. Like, it, it works for this show. And it works for this story. So she figures out that the symbol of love is the, m the face sculpture, plaster of Paris head, that her mom made for her out of love. And she, after she shows it around and scares off the other mask, she's able to take off the haunted mask, and it's just a mask again. So Carly and Beth is saved. And then the brother ends up putting the mask on. Why she brought it home with her makes no sense. Like, throw that shit away. Bury it. Do something. She just brings it home with her and throws it in her room. This evil mask that she couldn't get off of her. That was going to become her actual face. She just brings it home. <laughs> and then the brother ends up putting the mask on. And that's how we end. That we have no idea what happens after that. There is a haunted mask too. And I think it has to do with Chuck or Steve. One of them with the old man mask and the spiders. Awesome. I will probably do that one day this week. I'm not going to be doing these too often, but they're quick. I mean, 17 minutes for a two-parter, not bad. So that's The Haunted Mask, my favorite besides the Night of the Living Dummy uh, installments and episodes here. Absolutely awesome episode. Still, all these years later, it's still effective. It's still creepy. So... Wherever you guys are from, hope you're having a goosebumpy morning or a goosebumps night, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care, guys.